Welcome back to another video, Steve's success stories. I'm with a TPC member at his latest flip. This is it guys, how's he done? Let's go inside and find out. Now I'm inside, this is Ayush. Thank you so much for having us down here. Thank we really you. appreciate it. And I've had a little tour, beautiful, amazing. And you joined TPC last year, September, October. First question is, how have you found TPC actually? TPC has been one of the best networks that I've had. Um, I think coming to the first, the first time I came in-house to for your deal sourcing in-person training, um, the amount of knowledge I learned within one day was more than I had learned over like a year or two of like oh, wow. scouring online and going to some other online property gurus. Yeah. Um, so just that one day alone gave me such a breadth of knowledge where it was like, I actually did, it helped me navigate even this project here. Yeah. Um, so whilst I didn't use those skills for the deal sourcing, those skills were viable for other property areas such as flipping as well. Okay. Mm. The property world, you've got to be truthful. Mm. There's a lot of problems. Yes. Great successes. Mm -hmm. Huge money if you get it correct. And it can create any future you want. But we have problems. Yes. Tell me some of the problems that you faced in here yeah. and how you overcame them. Uh, so one problem off the top of my head was that with the window in the upstairs back bedroom, uh, we had made a window order uh, for having it opening from the top because we wanted to match it to the window in the front bedroom only be, to be told by the building control when they came over that no, it needs to be a fire escape window, so it needs to open from the bottom. So we had to order another window, lost a little bit of money in that. Um, another thing was that we had a, uh, the back garden wall was shared with the property owner um, just on the other side. Um, and that was a shared wall. So it was meant to be a 50-50 cost. Uh, it was a lot of hard work to convince him to split the cost 50-50 with me. Um, but during the negotiations, there was some miscommunication with the builders and they just went ahead and knocked it out without be, being given the go ahead or giving any quotes or anything like that. So, so you was trying to agree with your neighbor who owns 50% of the wall? Yes. That you're going to fix it, modernize it or repair it? That's it and you went through a lengthy process of communication and negotiation. Yeah, that's it. And then your builders mm -hmm. missed all that stage yeah. and just came and ripped it down. Came in one day and the wall was down and I was like... And how did your neighbor react? Furious. Really? Furious. I wasn't here, um, but the builders say that they just came over because the wall wasn't there anymore and they were just screwing at the builders and saying, wait, you might as well stop the whole build. Um, I work in the council, in the labor party, blah, blah, blah. And you know, I'm gonna shut this down and my builders just carried on working props. So did you have to pay for it in the end? So I had to pay for it, but because it was the builder's mistake, what we agreed was that there will be no labor cost in that, but I would be happy to pay for the materials. So in the end, it ended up being cheaper than the 50-50 split yeah. anyway, so it worked in my favor, but it wasn't nice to have that sort of relationship. Um, With the neighbors? Yeah. Okay, because neighbors, when you're in property world, Neighbours are one of the biggest issues oh, huge. knowing. Yeah. Um, so it's nice that it's happened on your second project. Well, so, I, yeah, exactly. That's a fair point to make. And this neighbour here and this neighbour here. Um, so I had already knocked on there. There was before the property like renovation had started and I had already built quite a rapport with them. Uh, so I knew the landlord of this uh, property here and the owners of theirs. And... Um, the back, uh, the back neighbor did try and convince the, the neighbors here that I might have weakened their walls and whatnot. And um, I had a quick conversation with the landlords and uh, the owners and they were like, we genuinely don't know what he's talking about. We've been in the loop while you've been doing the whole renovation. Good. So relationships play a huge role. Um, otherwise, you know, people could get swayed by other people's words, but because I've been in the loop with what's going on, I brought them in during the renovation and whatnot at different stages. They know for a fact that this 
you know. Yeah, it's, it's been, done, been professionally, done professionally, signed so. off by building inspectors. Yeah. Okay, so communication is something Huge. that you can advise people at home. Sometimes you might need to pivot. Sometimes you might have picked a strategy and now it's time to do something new. Well, I'm here to teach you for the full day how to do each strategy correctly and what strategy will work best for you with cash flow or creating generational wealth. Limited spaces, I'm back. We've been part of TPC, you hear me talk about stage payments mm -hmm. and paying the builders when the works are done and checking the works. So did you go through that rigorously? So initially they gave me a quote, which was a surround quote, and they said it's gonna be a weekly payment. And I, um, because I had already heard you talk about staged payments, I think it was on one of your videos, um, I went back to them and I said, no, that's not the way it's gonna work. It's only after this that the other is done, then that much is gonna be released then the next lot of jobs is done, then that's gonna be released. So it's really dependent on how quick you get the job done that the payment will be released. So it could actually work in your favor or it could work against you. But at the end of the day, they're held accountable. Of course, yeah. yeah. So guys, take a look around. Let's see the property. It's a three bedroom, terrace property in Reading. The quality is amazing. Everything that I would do, he's done. Apart from one thing, let's see if you can spot it. But let's have a tour and then we'll get into the most important part of the whole journey, the numbers. Yes. had a tour of the property and you can see the level that Ayush has actually done this renovation to. But before we move on to the numbers, you mentioned that I helped you with the YouTube videos, yeah. which obviously I don't know mm. that you're using those. Unless you call me or phone me and say, can I have this information? The impact that the YouTube videos have are quite, quite significant, aren't yeah. they? Huge. So how did they help you? Huge. So. Um I would say the color of the property. So the idea of having a blank canvas for whoever buys it was a huge thing that I learned off of your videos. The, I've, I had a fair few people come into the property and say, oh, you should have an off-white color, or you should have a feature wall here, or you should do this or that or the other. And because I was looking at your videos, I decided against it all. Um, so that even went down to the color of the kitchen. So the kitchen was actually done before I bought it, but um, there was changes made to it. So it had gray walls before and I changed those to white as well to make it more neutral. And even the backsplash that was there, I changed it to Metro tiles, white and black because the backsplash color was like a bluey, um, bluey green color, which um, wasn't like a blank canvas that everybody would enjoy as soon as they came in. Yeah, I think it's really important for people to understand exactly what you've just said there is, is it's not even smart, it's common sense. Yeah. Because let's say that that wall there was blue and you were selling this property to somebody and they walked in and they saw a blue wall. They was like, oh, I've got to move in and paint the wall. Yeah. But people get excited when they come into a project and they see all blank canvas and they go, I want to put my colour on that wall or I want to do that. Mm. And I think even that little tip that comes across in my videos and the way I always say blank canvases, greys, whites, creams, neutrals, don't go blues, greens, yellows, because you're, you're basically just reducing the amount of people that are interested in what you're doing. So, so that, that's really, and it's really good to hear as well because we don't hear a lot of, you know, your YouTube videos help us. It's always, Steve, you help me or you mm. did this, but just having the YouTube videos out there. Yeah, the YouTube videos alone were like little gems, little golden nuggets of, um, you know, uh, advice and knowledge that I could get. Now, the numbers. Yes. This is the important part. Guys, we're in Reading. How far from central London are we? So we're about 25 minute train. If you take a car, it's about half an hour. So is this, forgive me, because I'm not too sure around the London area, but 
would you say that this is a desirable place to live for people who work in the city? 100%. We've got Reading West Station, which is a five minute walk from here. That will connect you to Reading Station and take you all the way into London. Or you've got the Reading Central Station, which is about a 15 minute, 10, 15 minute walk from here, which will take you straight to Paddington. Okay. Um, and it's also got the Elizabeth Line over there as well. So, so that 25 minute journey for people who live in the city, yeah. this is ideal. Well, we got a lot of people from London moving into Reading because of the Elizabeth Line, because of our connection to London with the National Rail, um, even taking your car into London, as I said, you know, you look at 30 to 40 minutes to get into London. It's so convenient and it's a perfect place to bring up a family as well with the good schools and whatnot around us. Um, so yeah, huge shift in price though, okay. huge shift in price. Okay, so total outlay, Yeah. what are we on? So we, I have put in £317,000 for the purchase, renovation, and any mortgages involved. So you're at three seventeen dollars today? Yes. Okay. You've had a few offers, haven't you? Yes. What's it on the market for? So it's on the market for £375,000. Um, I would be happy to accept about three hundred sixty, three sixty five. dollars Okay. So if you get the three seventy five, dollars you're looking at around a £55,000 profit. So if I get the three seventy five. dollars I'm looking at about sixty three thousand pounds. Yeah, sixty three. Yeah. Okay. Minus your fees and expenses and stuff like that, you'll walk away with fifty five yeah. after solicitors and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And if you get three sixty, yeah, you're around the fifty. Yeah. Just yeah. a little bit lower. Just a bit lower. You're looking at about the about the forty five k. And um, you have done this on your second, second property. Yes. Okay. How old are you? So I'm twenty nine. Twenty nine. Is this your future? Hundred percent. And why? What is it about property? that makes you go 100% with that confidence? So I got a nine to five job and I compare it to what I'm doing in property now. Um, every bit of effort that I put within this game, which is my game now, this property was my property, I'm gonna get all the fruits of that labor. If I do work really hard in a nine to five, they're gonna give me a little bonus or a little salary, but there's someone else who owns a company that is getting the real So you want to be the boss and, and you want to live life on your own terms. I want to put, whatever effort I put into something, I want to get the appropriate fruits for that labor. That's okay. what it is. And property allows me to do that. Another reason is that whatever effort I put, whatever creativity I put, I can literally see it and feel it with my own eyes and hands, you know, and see that this is actually my creation. Um, do you get a sense of pride you, when you walk in here? Yeah. Because I get that. When I go to my projects, and I walk around my projects, I actually have a little smile to myself. Now you guys don't see this, because we do so much and we've been doing it for a long time, sometimes the shine can get taken off. But when I'm on my own and I walk around a project, I, I have this like sense of, yeah, this, even though I didn't do the works, it was my vision yeah. and it's been brought to life. Yeah. So I, I understand what you say, but other people who have never done this, until it happens, they're not going to understand that feeling. It is, a, it is a, an amazing feeling when you come in, you see what it was before, you see that what it is afterwards is all through the work that you've put in. And there is something special about how that feels. So what's next? What's next is probably do a couple more of these sort of smaller properties and then I want to move on to bigger things such as commercial to resi and um, yeah. Okay, nice. Well guys, there you have it. Fantastic property, potentially a fantastic amount of money if he reaches the top. And even if he doesn't get the top of what he wants, it's still a fantastic amount of money. Also, 40 to 65,000 pound profit in how long? So I got this property in January, straight away the work started. And we finished the works about a month ago. Uh, so that's what? 16 weeks. 16 weeks with the potential of earning 40 to 65,000 pounds. I don't think there's anything else we need to say. <laughs>